Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host Ahmed Nawaz with the latest roundup of sports today. Let's take a look at what we're discussing. First of all, Pakistan Cricket Board has announced a new team management for the Pakistan Cricket Team. Jason Gillespie, the former Australian fast bowler, has been named as the coach for Red Ball Cricket, that is of course Test Cricket. And apart from that, uh, Gary Creston has been named as Pakistan's white ball coach for T20 internationals and one internationals. Apart from that, Azad Mahmood has been named as the assistant coach across formats. So I think it's wonderful. Uh, especially that decision of getting Gary Kirsten, I think is going to give Pakistan those winning ways in that mentality that was missing. He's been very successful. We all remember his stint with India, with other teams as well. And I think uh, he brings a lot to the table as well. So we'll talk about that in detail. Then, of course, we move on to cricket action that is being played as well. Pakistan versus West Indies women. Uh, the third T20 international takes place today. Uh, West Indies have beaten us in the two games. They're 2-0 up in the five-match series so far. And this is a must-win game for Pakistan. If they lose this one, the series is done and dusted. They already lost the one internationals 3-0 as well. So we'll talk about that. Then, of course, we move on and we discuss, uh, you know, uh, a recent development, which is, of course, the series that just concluded between Pakistan and New Zealand. And there's a lot to talk about there as well. Pakistan, of course, winning the final match, the series ending in a draw. Uh, but I think uh, a lot needs to be discussed in detail as well. Uh, there is, you know, all the chances that you talk about where Pakistan have given us that momentum that was needed. They've shown that they have that ability, but unfortunately, inconsistency is something that we need to talk about. Why can't we consistently transform these performances? I think Osama Mir was brilliant. He was the one who made that difference, leading wicket-taker in the PSL, and that's what you want from you know, your lead bowler. But giving him a chance just in the finale of the game is something that is very, very important uh, to gauge as well. Uh, how you use your bowlers, uh, how you use Imad Wasim, especially with his ability to bowl the new ball. Everything is very important, especially great to see Shine Shah Afridi back in rhythm. I think that is wonderful for Pakistan as well. So we'll talk about that in detail because, like I said, the stats speak for themselves as well. If you look at this game as well, there's a lot, lot that needs to be talked about. Then, of course, we move on and we discuss the ninth edition of the ICC Men's T20 World Cup. New Zealand, South Africa and England have announced that T20 squads event is going to take place in the USA and the West Indies, so we'll be making up for all of these squads and what we can expect as well. Time now to introduce the guests. First of all, in studios, we've been joined by sports expert, our regular feature, Mr. Ali Mehdi. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Walaikum salam, I'm very well. Great to have you on the show. We've also been joined by senior sports journalist, a regular part of our programs, Sayyid Heather. Assalamu alaikum, sir, how are you? Walaikum salam, Ahmed, I'm fine. How are you? Finally, a development takes place at the Pakistan Cricket Board. We now have separate managements that have been announced. How do you see the development? And, of course, Jason Gillespie as the red ball coach and Gary Kirsten, which is of particular interest in the white ball format. Um, uh, I would like, uh, basically, basically comprehensively, it's a good uh, uh, move by the PCP to get uh, such uh, Gary Kirsten. Gary Kirsten is a very big man in the world for the coaching. Uh, Gary Kirsten was the coach of Indian team and they have won the uh, World Cup in 2011. And uh, all the time, he is the man figure of the coaching. He was in his batting uh, in, when he was playing. He was the best batsman of the world. And he has got a lot of achievement in, in cricket and coaching. Now, uh, he is uh, the coach of the Pakistan team and Jason Gillespie also the coach, but uh, different formats. Uh, Christian is only in the short format to T20 and 50 overs and Gillespie will be in the test cricket. But the question is that Gary Christian or Gillespie, both of them, will they tour to Pakistan? Will they stay in Pakistan? Or they will be only with the Pakistan team on the tours? Or if the Pakistan, uh, someone, uh, any team is touring Pakistan and they are playing international cricket in Pakistan. So this is not the coaching. Coaching, it's a full-time work, full-time job. I think Pakistan should have someone that who is staying in Pakistan and coaching the Pakistan team uh, all the time. Like Bob Volmer, he was living here. Jeff Lawson, he was living here in Pakistan. So all the international, or Dev Watmore, he was living in Pakistan. Such type of the coaches we need. But Gary Kirsten, anyway, he is the best choice for the Pakistan. But if he is only in the international tours and uh, touring uh, uh, Pakistan team, then it's not enough for the Pakistan. Pakistan needs someone, but we we have to make some hopes that Pakistan's performance will be better, like uh, against the New Zealand uh, B or C great team. They have not showed 100% uh, performance. So we hope that uh, in Gary Kirsten and Gillespie's coaching, Pakistan will go some further in, uh, uh, will get some big achievements. And T20 World Cup is the first uh, tournament, and Pakistan have to show something really better as they have done in past. 
I think the indicator is straightforward. This first assignment is, I think, the major assignment is going to be for Gary Kirsten at least, the ICC Men's T20 World Cup, because the two series in between, I don't think, would you know be a right indicator to gauge what they want from the team as well. They've got very little time though, only one month to invest in their plans and you know the players that they want to identify. Ali Mehdi, how do you see this development? Look, I think it's a uh, it's a very interesting development considering that you have two different coaches. I think this is the first time. This is indeed the first time this is happening in the PCB and Pakistan cricket too. I'm not too sure actually. I'm of, on the other camp that you need one coach for all four max. I think that's important because that one coach, head coach should be there and he should be actually following all the four match, especially in Pakistan's uh, case too. You know, when, they, when it comes to other teams, it's different. But for Pakistan, I think you should always have one coach because he gets to know the familiar, he gets to familiarize with the team, you know, especially if, if it's a foreign coach too, gets to know the team, the, you know, the weaknesses, the strong points, gets to know the culture, um, you know, it's sort of amalgams into it. So I think it's a bit of a bold decision. Uh, Gary Kirsten has proven he's been a fantastic coach over the years. Obviously, we remember him as the winner of the uh, this, uh, the winning coach of the uh, Indian World uh, Cricket Team, which won the 2011 World Cup. But ever since then, he hasn't done much in international cricket too. He has, That's since right. 2013, he hasn't been on the international stage. Since then, he's been mainly focusing on franchise cricket. Should it be from 2018 to 20, he was part of the uh, Royal uh, uh, challenges Bangalore for the IPL and obviously for the Gujarat tie, uh, Titans who actually helped them to win the trophy a couple of years ago. So I think it's of a bit of a bold decision. Mm, uh, it's an interesting one definitely but I think the one on the other side, the test cricket one format, you know, we've appointed Jason Gillespie. I think it's a very fresh approach. I think Jason Gillespie is a proven coach. He's been brilliant for South Australia over the years, helped them to winning uh, the, the Big Bash too. You know, they've won the Sheffield Shield cricket many times too. So I think he's an interesting coach. He'll bring fresh impetus and I think definitely, you know, for the home series against England and Bangladesh, I think he's going to be a fantastic acquisition. Well, certainly. Uh, also joining us now on Sports Extra is sports expert Malik Usman. Asalaamu Alaikum, how are you? Wa Alaikum Asalaam, I'm doing well. Usman, how do you see this development? Obviously, we've got mixed statements over here, but I think it's very important to gauge the backgrounds of these coaches coming into the Pakistan team as well. I uh, see. Uh, it's a it's a good omen. I think it's a statement signing. Uh, what Mohsin Nakvi, uh, the PCB chairman, wants to present is that he want, he means business. And uh, we have spoken this in our previous episodes as well. That uh, this T20 World Cup is uh, it's a kind of uh, setting setting the benchmark for Mohsin Nakvi as his tenure begins as PCB chairman in the l last couple of months' time. So this is one big tournament that is uh, up for grabs for Pakistan. And I think uh, they will rely on this tournament a lot uh, to indicate that how far this Pakistan cricket board can and, and Pakistan cricket team can go. And for that matter, Jason Gillespie, he's an outstanding coach. I, I love that player. I love his coaching as well. I thought uh, if he was a full-time coach for, in all three formats, it would have been great as well. But him having as a test coach is, is a big statement, I think. Uh, uh, and Gary Kirsten, for that matter, it's a fresh approach yet again. And he has been engaged in franchise cricket, so he knows a lot about the culture of T20 throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be a good test of character for these Pakistani players as well. How uh, it's, it's a clash of personalities as well. Uh, we have big personalities in our dressing room in, in, in players, and these two are also huge personalities, and they have had great playing careers as well. So I think this is going to be this is the, the clash of culture, the clash of identity, the clash of personalities. This is going to decide that how this <laughs> Pakistan team is going to go forward. And that's where they have Azir Mahmood as the middleman in, in all the of buffer this. Zone. <laughs> He's the buffer zone in, in between. And I hope this 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 uh, marriage clicks actually. And if it does click, Pakistan have uh, have a very, very bright future on their hands. Because uh, Kirsten, a proven uh, coach, mm -hmm. player, Gillespie, proven coach, player, and I think going forward, uh, mind you, Jason Gillespie hasn't featured in international cricket yeah. as a coach yet. So this is going to be a, a good test for him as well. And with Pakistan and the season going forward, I think a, a, there are exciting times ahead. Certainly. Uh, Sir, Heather, if we, if we gauge these two personalities, obviously, you know, both of them have been part of those winning ways, either as a coach or as a player. So, you know, what was missing for that Pakistan mentality is that habit to win, I think. That's what's been missing. On and off player selection, everything has been an issue. But you know that mentality to win, something that when Sarfaraz was there was instilled in the team when you were winning 11 out of 11 consecutive series and you know that never give up attitude was in the team. How important is it to bring that back by virtue of either Jason Gillespie or uh, Gary Kirsten? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the proportion... Uh, Proportion of the winning, um, if you compare with the Safras era and Babar Azam era, 
you can see some difference, but I think it's it's not a big difference. Pakistan had won also some matches, uh, some vital matches. They have won, but they have lost a lot of matches. Uh, the problem occurred when uh, the players, they are not combined, and the players, they don't know their role, what they have to do. And discussion, uh, a lot of discussion being met in the media and in the, in the dressing room about the performance of the players, batters, bowlers, and every, everyone. The, our system's problem is that everyone is concerned about the Pakistan cricket team's performance. Every politician, every media anchor, every person who is not, have never, ever, never he, he has played the cricket, but he is concerned about the Pakistan. And they make some so high criticism on the players, even uh, they are calculating the Pakistani players like that. Uh, they are the street players. They, sh they will go and uh, they will win every match. It is not possible. The most important thing is that how the Pakistan team is performing. And I think Gary Kirsten and Justin Gillespie, they will, they will not be, um, uh, I would say that he, they will not be uh, an element to get immediately Pakistan on the winning path, but they will, they will try to get some combination, right combination in the Pakistan team. It's very important for the Pakistan team. You have seen in the last series, five openers were in the team and f uh, definitely three have to play in middle order. This is not the right combination. We have to seek out right combination, the bowlers, batters, all-rounders, and uh, spinners, everyone. We have to get someone right person at right position. I think Gary Kirsten will go first to get the right person uh, at the right position, then he will get a combination. And any event, T20 World Cup, or the uh, 50 overs World Cricket, or Test Cricket, it is always necessary. If you see the coaching of like uh, Justin Gillespie in, in in Australia in, in the league cricket, he is I have I have watched him and he was always to, uh, focused to the uh, to right combination. Gary Kirsten he has done also in the 2011 World Cup Indian team, he has got some players on the top. Yuvraj Singh he has given a major role to Yuvraj Singh to get. Uh, the Indian team uh, in the winning position. So I think Gary Kirsten and Jason Gillespie, they will both work first, the right combination. And I think it's a it's a right way to get a better result. Well, certainly uh, a, a, a bit needs to be focused, Ali Mehdi. I think our prime focus right now needs to be white ball cricket. Obviously, we can, you know, uh, keep test cricket on the side for a bit. Uh, because Gary Kirsten's uh, right now appointment is of prime importance for Pakistan. Uh, they're going to be playing Ireland and England, and then they move on to the World Cup. How do you see that synergy now? Because obviously, identification of players, the selection process, the skipper is Babar Azam, we know that already, is something that is already going to be given to Kirsten. He'll have a pool of players to work with. It won't be that he'll be involved in the entire selection process. Well, he'll have to, as soon as he gets done with the uh, with the IPL, he'll be flying in right uh, as soon as uh, Indian Premier League starts. And then he'll be given this pool of players and he'll be assisted by Azhar Memu too. So he'll have not <coughs> much time. He'll have to get set the ground running. You know, you have three T20s against Ireland uh, in Ireland. And of course, you go to England you know, against the world champions. You'll play, be playing them on their backyard. So he'll have to get this uh, ground running he'll had uh, so because so the, so hence i think it's going to be a huge challenge for him you know he'll have to get all the combinations right the strategy right and i think at the back of his head he must be thinking about it uh, long and hard exactly how he's going to go about but it's going to be a huge challenge for him you know getting to know these players he's never actually he's obviously worked with india before but he's never worked with any with any uh, with uh, with the pakistan cricket team or any franchises in pakistan so he'll have to get to know the culture he'll have to get to know the players and um, he'll have to you know start off very very fast because you know after the series uh, mm -hmm. after the series we're going to obviously have have a test series then we're going to go to the red ball format so it's 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 going to be a, quite a task for him but i think if there's anybody who has the experience who has you know the knowledge of how to operate in a quick fashion in white ball cricket uh -huh. it's gary kirsten well uh, usman i think the first good omen is to have a uh, coach physically present instead of a virtual coach o over the years <laughs> I was laughing because Madhi was talking about that he has a good knowledge of cricket and everything. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> thinking that how much of that knowledge is going to be utilized by Pakistan yeah. cricket team. That's a big question mark. And secondly, talking about that virtual coaching and live mm -hmm. coaching and physical coaching and everything. Uh, these are all concepts that PCB has introduced to the world of cricket. But uh, this is a good omen that you are going to have a first class coach in Pakistan side with the Pakistani players. 
and uh, they are full time coaches as well it's not about that they would only be joining on the tours and this has been a big plus for him uh, uh, for Gary Kirsten for Gillespie and for the Pakistan team as well knowing about the culture knowing about the domestic cricket knowing about uh, the players uh, waiting in the fringes this is going to be very very important for the Pakistan team and for these new coaches because it's not all about only this playing 11 that feature uh, uh, oh, oh, over and over and over again you need to bring in fresh blood as well and uh, i am expecting good news from gillespie and kirsten that they are going to have massive say in this team selection as well and the way they are going to play cricket the brand of cricket that they are going to play if this is the same brand of cricket which they are playing right now then i think mr gary kirsten and mr jason gillespie have their work cut out they have to play aggressive new modern brand uh, branded cricket mm -hmm. and that is what is being pursued in australia that is what is pursued in west indies that they always play at aggressive cricket england and for that matter south africa as well i am not a big fan of indian cricket pakistani cricket uh, and uh, for that matter asian cricket as far as t20 is concerned mm -hmm. you have to be much more proactive and that is what i'm expecting from you i think out of all of us sri lanka is the only one who was doing t20 cricket good i mean their records were a bit better than the most of us i think uh, the brand of cricket that they play that is actually very good i think they lack resources mm -hmm. certainly i think that that across the board we've seen that they are very talented young side as well but obviously then problems come in of their own as well as far as infrastructure development is concerned uh, and the way things have been handled with their cricket board uh, sir heather uh, particularly i think the coaching scenario is now uh, let alone finalized but i think the problem has been inconsistency with the management as well now because there is a elected uh, management in the pcb in the likes of uh, mr mohsen nakvi so obviously the coaches are coming with a lot more security and uh, plans for long term as well so i think that is also something that we really need to uh, discuss upon that that long term strategy will now be very important how uh, you know the selection committee the chairman obviously the coach and babar azam go about their business uh yes right uh, i think uh, it's not in my domain to uh, speak about the uh, management chairman of the pakistan cricket board and um, other uh, element of the pakistan cricket board but we can discuss about the selection committee and the coaching management uh, I would add something uh, to Usman that he was uh, speaking about uh, the coaching, virtual coaching and physical coaching. I think the time is running very quickly. Perhaps uh, in the next day we will have some AI coaches, artificial intelligence coaches. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's possible. It's, it's not. It's not a big, big thing. I think uh, sometimes uh, the coaching will be through the uh, artificial intelligence and the players. They will get some uh, training. through the system computer system so uh, regarding the selection committee and uh, uh, and what what we have right now at this moment uh, it's it, it's not working exactly i would say that a lot of people they are involved in the selection committee and the, in the coaching management dressing uh, wahab riaz and uh, mohammad yusuf they are the, all the big names they are not the small names they are big names but they cannot transform their talent to the young people Mohammad Yusuf especially he was the coach of under 19 he was the coach of Pakistan national team he was in academy but still i haven't seen any type of the player like mohammad yusuf we have produced the babar azam and mohammad rizwan and other players fakhar zaman they have they have produced by themselves but our coaches they are not working so now the question is that the foreign coaches if they are coming to the pakistan team what they will do they will not produce any babar azam more they can give some advices only our system they have to manage by itself otherwise if we will rely only on the foreign coaches they will give uh, something uh, like a, a, a quick process to get a big result it is not possible our system they need some really big remedy really we need somewhat because our system is not working no matter jason gillespie or gary kirsten or sunil gavaskar or any big name donald bradman if you get as a coach you cannot produce any big result until you don't have the system domestic system our domestic system is nothing our all efforts only for the psm all international events or to max press conferences coaches foreign coaches uh, most likely as a chairman he has announced he will get all the foreign qualified coaches for all type of the cricket the girls men's uh, boys uh, first class domestic schools everything he is saying that foreign coaches 
by which you cannot get the fake result. You have to get your domestic system at right way at, as the England, Australia, or other countries are doing. This is the major thing that they have to see and do if they are the elected president uh, management, they have to do something. Ali Mehdi, this uh, I think is a dilemma right now in Pakistan, but I think for the chairman, the vision is pretty clear. We also gauged it that for him, at least as far as he's there, he does not want to invest in, in local coaches, to be honest. And this Mohammed Yusuf saga is also very important because the fact is that technically if our batters are not improving, then where does that burden of responsibility lie? Well, it lies on, on the head coach. You know, obviously, he will have to look into it. You'll have you talking about Gary Kirsten, one of the greats of the game. You know, the high score once upon a time, about 188, he scored against um, against UAE. the UAE in the 96 mm -hmm. World Cup. Look, he's been a brilliant batsman too. So obviously, he can, can help. But this Mohammed Yusuf Saga, unfortunately, it hasn't really worked out very well. You'd expect would have expected him to be part of you know the whole mm -hmm. setup too, but unfortunately, that is because we even had Siklan Mushtaq and the spinners were still struggling. So you know, mix things over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mix things Mushtaq over there. But, yes. but I actually think Mohammad Yusuf had much more of an impact with mm -hmm. our batsmen too than Saklan did have with our spinners too. So, uh, I mean, it's it's a difficult one to call. But look, the fact of the matter is the PCB management headed by Mohsin Nakhvi has decided that we need foreign coaches too. And we need foreign influence on our players. And foreign uh, coaches mean that you've hired two of the best coaches over here. So we've got to get the best out of them. With regards to Gary Kirsten, obviously we know what a phenomenal batsman he is. Jason Gillespie, one of the greats of the game with the red ball too. So, you know, we've just got to our players have just got to make the most of their experience too and you know going ahead you know you've got a big year ahead of you so um, you know just put everything to bed and start from a fresh mm -hmm. slate over here because you know whatever has happened has happened now you know you have an elected government uh, elected body uh, in terms of PCB management they've started with a clean a new slate so you know we have to go ahead with it and you know it's a big year and you know we have to put everything behind because mm -hmm. you know it's a big year and you really want to do well in the world uh, T20 and then obviously in the test series at the end back end of the year. But well, certainly, uh, I think uh, particular focus should be there as well. But Usman, I think that dust needs to settle down now. If we're investing with the foreign coaches which we have appointed, then we need to go about it as our business as well. See, uh, having foreign coaches on domestic level is not a bad thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You can have some of your coaches learning from them, from mm -hmm. their experience, from their exposure as well. So once they are gone, uh, they can have a, a, a huge amount of information, huge amount of in invested experience from the senior coaches, from the foreign coaches that they have and they can utilize at a lower level or at that level as well. So it's not a bad thing, but let me see that uh, how long will it take uh, for Mohsin Nakwi to bring all these foreign coaches and at what amount, at, at what cost and for how long, that is going to be the key. If it is for a couple of seasons time, I think that is not going to do much wonders for Pakistan cricket. And some of our uh, domestic coaches, they have they have been doing pretty well, but uh, what have they gained from that? Nothing. They are, they are not uh, upgraded to the national team. Uh, we have some of the so-called legends of the game in Pakistan side who uh, every now and then are part of this big bracket of uh, either in the shape of uh, coaches or in the shape of managers or in the shape of selectors. Uh, for that matter, Muhammad Yusuf, he was uh, the head coach of Pakistan under 19. I don't, I did not see anything seriously changing mm -hmm. in that under 19 team that how well they performed under, under Muhammad Yusuf. He as a player was a great player, but how does he transform that greatest to the players he's coaching? I'm not so sure about it. And for that matter, being a legend of the game doesn't make you a great coach either. Jason Gillespie is not a huge player at his time mm -hmm. and same goes with Mr. Gary Kirsten as well. He was the part of all conquering Hansi Cronia team but he was not the Brian Lara or the Sachin Tendulkar at that time or the Saeed Anwar at that time. They were bigger players as well but they have invested, uh, they have used their uh, uh, knowledge of cricket and they have done uh, gone into coaching and they have been very very successful but how far Pakistani coaches are doing, they probably they have only one aim and that is to be featuring in the Pakistan national team. Have they been coaching any other country for that matter? I, I did not see anything of that sort. And talking about Saklan, Mushtaq, Ahmads, uh, they were great spinners and uh, they say that they have been doing wonders for England and West Indies. But what have they done for Pakistan cricket? I'm not so sure. Saklan, uh, for one thing that uh, you can credit him for the, uh, for the uh, doing for Pakistan cricket team is having those Pakistani flags while training. And that was all about patriot, uh, patronism. And it was all about Kudrat Ka Nizam and everything. And that is not how you take cricket forward. It is all about doing well. or It's all about execution, perfection, 
practice repetition but uh, what we do is Kudrat ka nizam and everything but I think now we are going to go forward along with Kudrat and nizam I think there should be effort on the field and that is what Jason Gillespie and the likes of Gary Kirsten are going to bring to this Pakistan side. Well absolutely I think uh, that you know really uh, tells us the way we've taken things in that time span as well and the stipulated time frame but I think it's very very important but because obviously I think now majority of teams are announcing their World Cup squad so I was the opinion that Pakistan needs to be sure as well. I don't want them to be the last team to announce their World Cup squad. If we're going to do it after England and Ireland, I think it's going to be very, very disappointing. But because of that timeline, uh, Sir Heather, what would you like to see? Because the fact is that once, if you announce the players on a stipulated time, even the players would be sure, then you can work on the role defining of these players in the team as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why they are delaying. Uh, it's totally clear that who will uh, tour to USA and West Indies for the T20 World Cup. We know that uh, only some players, one or two pl uh, players, they sh they have they should uh, uh, they have to decide if they will be in the team or not. But otherwise, all the players they are sure. And I think Pakistan team uh, management, uh, Pakistan cricket board management, they have to get some uh, uh, decisions quickly. Otherwise. If you take the decision at la uh, la uh, last minute, then uh, you are not able to uh, really to get uh, better performance from the players. Uh, if uh, our squad, what would be the for the T20 World Cup? Uh, most of the players didn't know that, and uh, the question is that how they are preparing for this T20 World Cup. They are delaying, uh, the Pakistan cricket was delaying the T20, uh, T20 World Cup squad after the England and Ireland tour. The last match of the England T20, I think, on 30th of the May. So on the 4th of June, you have to be in USA, in New York, because you have, uh, you have on the 9th of June, you have the first match in, uh, I think, 4th of June, you have the first match in Dallas. Uh, so it means that you don't have too much time and the major event is on your doorstep and you are still seeking and searching and trying the players. It means that you are not well prepared for this big event. Vaha Priyaz is the selector, I think, for last four, five, six months. It, still, he's not clear about the players. Then I would say that he's not working satisfactory. We need some good decisions, right time for the players, for the Pakistan cricket. Otherwise, you cannot ask the players that uh, their performance is not 100%. If we will give Absolutely. I, I, I think it says a lot of your priority straight. Ali, maybe you have some news for us as well. Because apart from other teams, India has also announced their uh, T20 World Cup squad. Yeah, big news that actually that uh, India has actually announced their squad for the T20 World mm -hmm. Cup. And I think the big biggest uh, news about that is obviously that Rohit Sharma is captain. Uh, this Hardik Pandya will be vice captain and the most interesting thing about this is that part of the squad of 15, there's no Shubman Gill. He's yeah, he's in reserve. But I think even more interestingly, uh, uh, Pant is making a comeback. Pant is making a comeback. Samson is over there. Chahal is back. Yes. So I think Chahal is a big uh, player. You know, mm -hmm. they have back. Mm -hmm. You know, Chahal is a player which I don't understand why he was not there yes. for the last World Cup. He's such an important cog for them. You know, he's consistent. He's a very good leg spinner. Dubey is also there. They've got a lot of interesting players over there and I think that and also Jaiswal you know Jaiswal who's been brilliant on the red, red ball front he's actually decided they've actually decided to stick with them so overall I think they've got a very good spine over there uh, Bumrah's obviously you know back you know he's in full flow over there so I think this is going to be a very this is a very strong team and the most important thing is that they're spin heavy heavy over there you know Kuldeep Yadav is also obviously there too. You have a this. You have a Chahal over there too. So I think that overall, you know, it's a very strong team which is headed to the USA and West Indies. Right, certainly, Usman. How do you see this squad? Obviously, as <coughs> Ali Mehdi also mentioned, I think <coughs> Shubman Gill's in the reserve, but you see a lot of diversity in this squad as well. And like I said, that I'm particularly interested that Rishabh Pant makes a comeback to the side. An interesting uh, team selection, I would say. It's very interesting team selection, and uh, with Pant in the side. I would like to see who is going to feature in the playing 11, either Samsung or Pant. Because I think as far as performance is concerned and considering the IPL performance, Samsung heads on, he has to be in the playing 11. But let us see, and uh, it's mostly a very, very consistent selection apart from a couple of players who have been doing well and the media was all out for them to be in the playing, uh, in, the, in the squad for the World Cup. So I think it's pretty consistent. Having Hardik Pandya is a big, big, big call because he has just returned from injury and has he hasn't set the ground on fire. 
and Rohit Sharma had an uh, inconsistent IPL so far. Virat Kohli's strike rate was talked about a lot, but uh, talking uh, about all these things and all this hype about the strike rates and underperforming and bringing in the fresh blood and everything, uh, India has mostly gone with the consistent uh, selection process. And bringing back Chahal, that was another uh, hue and cry from the media as well. And uh, he was doing pretty well for the past couple of years, but he wasn't getting selected. I completely agree with Madhubai that why he wasn't getting selected yeah. is very surprising. If he wasn't get, getting selected previously, why did he get selected now is another surprise. And they've also me. asked KL Rahul, which I think is a big, big decision for him. Yeah, it's a big call. I think they have gone very, very aggressively. That means uh, Jaiswal has made the cut and he has not only thrown Shubman Gill out of the team, he's mm. uh, also thrown KL Rahul out of the team. And mm. he has come back uh, after mm. an injury once again and he was doing pretty okay in the IPL. But uh, going with the selection process, I think it's slightly inconsistent in the sense that uh, they haven't considered performance totally mm -hmm. and uh, they have gone with experience but in some cases they have gone with the performance and not considered as uh, the, the the experience in that matter but all in all uh, i think their playing 11 is pretty clear and these new faces that are coming into the side are only going to warm the benches well certainly uh, sir heather india obviously have announced their squad that means that uh, they're ahead of us already in terms of announcing squad. Three teams already were. But, but like I said that, uh, you know, they've axed Kiel Rahul. Uh, Shubman Gill has been thrown to the reserve. Rishabh Pant is making a comeback. A lot of interesting things in this Indian squad. Yeah, absolutely. Indian squad, you know, the Indian players, uh, they have big consistency and uh, they are scoring everywhere. So I think it was also difficult for the Ajit Agarkar and also easy for the uh, selection. Uh, most of the players, they are in good form. Rohit Sharma is in very good form. Then Virat Kohli is in good form. Pandya uh, has been come back from injury. And uh, the bowling side, it's I think uh, Indian team is well balanced. They have good spinners, good fast bowlers, and middle order is performing. The major uh, thing is that in any team, that if the middle order is performing, because the top order uh, openers, their job is only to get the power play. But the, if the middle order is uh, strong, then it means that uh, the team is performing very well. I think Indian team is well balanced. Like the New Zealand team, they have announced also a very ba well balanced team. So the question is that uh, what will be the Pakistan team's perform performance and who will be included in uh, uh, included and who will be out from the team. Uh, I think uh, most of the teams, they are good balanced and uh, they are ready for the big event. Uh, Sir, what about their bowling now? Uh, recent past, their batters have still one way or the other performed, but the bowling has struggled. Do they make for the amends right now in this squad? Uh, you mean the Indian bowling or the Pakistan yes, bowling? Indian, Indian bowling, sir. Uh, Indian bowling, give, yeah, they are starting a little bit, but I think in West Indies, you know that. Uh, West Indies is not like that uh, big, big scoring matches. So, so bowlers, they have some age there in West Indies, not like uh, India or uh, Sri Lanka. They are the, the bowlers, they don't have uh, uh, big things to do. But in West Indies, the bowlers, they have a little bit edge and uh, the matches will be balanced in the West Indies pitches. I, as I have seen in the West Indies, the pitches are good for, uh, same time for the bowler and batters. So Indian bowling is performing well. Um, they have good chahal. He's, he's there. Kulvip Yadav is the most important uh, spinner for the West Indies tracks in the team. So it, it's a good balanced team, and I, I think uh, it will give a very hard time to other, other teams. Uh, Ali Mehdi, now it's an interesting one, this one, isn't it? Because a lot of that reliance was on Jasprit Bumrah. Uh, once he got injured, they were exposed. But even when he came back, if he struggled, the team struggled. Uh, spin options apart from Jadeja, they probably couldn't extract what they wanted to as well. Uh, Jadav was doing well in between now because they've got Chahal back as well. So it's going to be interesting how they go about their business. And especially if Hardik wasn't bowling, then, you know, it was no point of that all-round performance mm. in there as well. Yeah, completely. And now would you see this team over here during the, uh, the recently closed concluded ICC World Cup a few years ago. Obviously, they lost uh, uh, Hardik Pandya, which was a huge miss during mm -hmm. the middle of the tournament too. Then Chahal wasn't there too. And now they brought both these players back into the team too with a fully firing and fit uh, this uh, Jaspreet Bumrah too. So I think that team has actually diversity in the bowling lineup. Obviously, you, you have uh, the Bumrah over there, you know, firing on all cylinders too. On the spin department, because we do know that the West Indies and in America, the wickets are going to turn quite a bit. You've got Ravindra Jadeja over there. 
then obviously with the likes of uh, uh, with uh, the Kuldeep Yadav and then Chahal too. So I think it's going to be a very good mix over there. And they've gone with a very attacking team like you mentioned over there. I'm actually shocked that they haven't gone with Rahul. Rahul mm. is that sort of a mm -hmm. player who can change matches. You know, we saw during the World Cup too. Now mm. somebody like Ajinkar Hane who's always consistent in between whenever needed. When the entire team was, I think the batting line was faltering like a house of cards. Rahul at least was that stability element. Rahul was that and I think that they put a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Jaiswal. You know, if I was part of the team, Indian team management, I wouldn't really expose Jaiswal to this because Jaiswal has been, you know, he's been excellent on, in the red ball. You know, he's gotten off to a great start but putting him in a world T20 with no Rahul over there is going to put a lot of pressure on them because I just feel that Jaiswal, why is he may be very good up the order? But can you fit him in the middle of the order? I'm not too sure. You know, he probably would struggle over there and that's where Rahul has a lot of mm. experience and not putting him over there is going to be, they, that could be a big miss for uh, for India too. You know, mm. Sky is over there. We know Sky is very... But where uh, you blame? I think the big question is how do you, like everybody saying, how would you address that playing 11 now? Because obviously if you had KL Rahul, they were planning to play him in the middle order. Now Rohit's going to open, there's no question about him. Who's going to support him? Virat Kohli is going to come at number three, but then that four, five, six, how do you adjust? Then you have to play uh, Jaiswal at number mm. two too. And then yes. if you're mm. going to play Jaiswal at number two, he still hasn't been pr proven in, you know, in, mm. in the white ball format. We have to see. I mean, I haven't been following the uh, this the IPL very closely, but one thing is for sure is that he's done very well in the red ball format. Mm. I think the one thing they've gone with is because these two know each other very well in the red ball format, probably that they can translate that into the white ball format in the T20 World Cup. Only time will tell, but I think it's a very very mm -hmm. aggressive and brave decision by the management and you know the uh, the management really trusts Jaiswal that's why they've gone ahead with him. Uh, Usman interesting element right now once again in this Indian team is that if you remove Virat Kohli from the equation and if he gets out early come to that number four five six that is a very exposed middle order if Rishabh Pant makes a comeback he has not got international time behind him. Uh, Surya Kumar Yadav is a touch and go, can get out anytime. Hardik Pandya is struggling with form right now. So I think this middle order is going to be the biggest problem for India. That is where experience comes in. Mm. I think this is a very, very beatable team. Mm. Uh, I think uh, they have got uh, their work cut out. KL Rahul was someone who could have opened as well as come yeah. in the middle order as well. But now with Jaiswal in the side, you have to open with him or he, he has to be out of the playing 11. Mm. If I was someone, uh, as one of the selectors of the Indian side, mm. I would have picked, if Kohli had to play and Rohit Sharma had to play, they would have been opening the batting. Mm. And from there on, you would have brought in this exuberance and this attacking and helter skelter kind of players. Mm -hmm. See, Jaiswal is a proper batsman. He has had a good test, test series, and that was in India. Mm. He's doing okay, pretty okay in IPL. He has a century in IPL in this edition. That is again in India and scoring a hundred in this IPL is no big deal. What Everybody is scoring, right. Everybody's <laughs> scoring 100. I think uh, India has dug its grave by uh, bringing out these kind of pitches and small boundaries in this IPL because it has done nothing for the bowlers. It has been all goody goody for the batsmen and everybody is scoring 100. We saw even Jax, being chased the other day. Even Will Jacks, he scored 100 and his second 50 was of 10 balls. Yeah. So this is how this cricket <laughs> is going. Everybody is scoring 100. Everybody is scoring 50 for fun. And yet, Punt hasn't fired in this IPL mm. and he is in the squad having Samson in the squad and I'm pretty sure that Pant will feature in the playing 11 just because he's a left-hander. Mm. Okay, so Samson will stay out. Uh, Pant is not in form. Hardik Pandey is not in form. Surya Kumar Yadav is coming back. Uh, Virat Kohli's strike rate is a problem. Jaiswal is debuting uh, in a World T20. So this is going to be a big, big mm. problem. For and come to the bowling side of it as well, Usman. I was com yes. coming to that point. So now looking at the Indian bowling, mm. uh, I'm talking about the all 15 players, right? Four spinners out of them, one dimensional bowling, three left arm spinners, mm. and only Chahal is a right leg spinner. Yes. spinner, leg spinner. Mm. You have three fast bowlers, Ashdeep, Siraj, and Bumrah. All right. Now Hardik has to bowl. If he doesn't bowl, he cannot feature in this playing 11, not yeah. just because of his batting, certainly not. But uh, looking at his bowling, what he has been doing in IPL, <laughs> I think it is not going to bring a huge amount of confidence to his uh, repertoire. So that is going to be a big problem for India. I think India has been too quick to announce its squad and they have uh, avoided the risk of bringing exuberance, too much exuberance in the playing 11. Mm -hmm. Looking at the squad, it is going to be more experience, less, uh, less exuberance with the likes of Dubey sitting and warming the bench. No, but it was if, <laughs> if, if, if they had somebody like Mohamed Shami in that bowling lineup, I would have said, okay, they've given a bit of experience to that bowling lineup. You see, Indian uh, media was already talking about Siraj mm -hmm. and uh, his inconsistency throughout this IPL. Mm -hmm. And he has been inconsistent in one, one day match. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of matches let mm -hmm. go when he ran through the bat uh, batting lineup. Apart from that, he's not been extremely 
extremely consistent with the likes of Shami and Bumrah. You know, you can, it's not like the captain gives him the ball and you expect a wicket every time. Uh, against Pakistan, he fired because of the pitch. And mm -hmm. against Sri Lanka, he fired because of the lights in Mumbai. Uh, all in all, he doesn't go, run through the batting lineup, and he has not been outstanding as far as uh, T20 is concerned, especially in this IPL. And I was very, very surprised looking that he was in the squad. So I think uh, India has been very, very brave. In this. I, I don't think they have been brave. They have gone with the less pressure that is bringing in more experience and less newer blood. And then that is what I thought. I think they, rely, they are relying on the experience in this World Cup, which I think has been a mistake. Uh, looking at what I'm expecting for the, from the Pakistani uh, 15 players, I think Pakistan has a massive, massive chance to win against India in New York. Uh, Usman, if you could also add to it, uh Rohit Sharma's uh, captaincy over here as well. This is a very important uh, point right now because this is yet another ICC tournament which if he's captaining and if Indians don't see a result, there is already hue and cry of him and captaincy. I think this is uh, anyway going to be his last edition as mm. captain in an ICC tournament. I don't see him going forward. And it is very much likely that Hardik Pandya is going to be the captain of T20, certainly. And uh, there was a lot of hue and cry about who is going to be the captain. And BCCI just couldn't decide. And they were not very clear about it, that who is going to lead the team forward. And once they came out, uh, in, in the next few days, it was Hardik Pandya who was traded from Gujarat Titans to the Mumbai Indians. And he became the captain. So Hardik Pandya was technically leading his national team captain in this IPL and both haven't been doing wonders in this IPL <laughs> by all and by all means okay as Rohit had been slightly better than I than Hardik Pandya but that even I could have done much better than what Hardik Pandya <laughs> is doing in this IPL so uh, all of them have their work cut out uh, right. Virat Kohli for that matter is it, the strike rate is the problem he gets bulk of runs there is no doubt about it is a class act but his strike rate is a problem Rohit Sharma is out of form Hardik Pandya is out of form Pant is out of form Surya Kumar Yadav is just returning so these are their top five mm. and now talking about the bowling we have already spoken yes. uh, Bumra is outstanding uh, Chahal is making a comeback yeah. Kuldeep Yadav is always in and out Azhar Patel and Jadeja one of them will play and Jadeja only performs when the pitch is assisting him so there is going to be a lot of uncertainty <laughs> as far as their bowling is concerned well sir I think our, our indicator is always them so on paper we become a fairly better side as far as that is concerned but thank you very much Usman Ali Mehdi and Sir Heather for joining us I think uh, as days progress we'll have other complete squads as well and I think it's going to be very important but every squad that is announced won't make any difference to us at least unless we get our own squad as well. So I think that is very important. On that note, from me and the entire team, it's goodbye for now.